I'm Nick. Welcome to Get Out and Wrench. Today, I'm working on my 1991 Camaro that I got in a car accident with the day before Thanksgiving 2022. Um, the car flipped over and hit the front of my car and crushed the whole front end. So today, I got a couple fenders here, over there, that I'm going to be sanding down so I can paint them. The car has already just had a cheap flat black paint job on it, so that's what I'm going back with. And I'm not doing professional paint work, so this is just to get this car. See, I already have the front end cut off of it. I'll add a, a video of me cutting the front end off of this <clears throat> in here, too. So as you can see here, this is all bent in. You can see the crease there. So this car's been in an accident once before. As you can see, previous damage here. And this is all bent down. This is from the current accident. Um, what I'm doing now <clears throat> is I'm going to Drill out all the spot welds on this side, and then drill out all the spot welds on this side, and get this red support out of here. So I got the radiator out, and we're gonna go in here. I'm probably gonna cut this with the sawzall just to make it easier to get into, but we got some spot welds. I don't know if you can see them. They're right here. Spot welds there that I need to get drilled out. The same thing on this side. And there's a bunch. The battery tray, I guess I'll get a vacuum all that stuff out of there. And on this side, <coughs> I have a new battery trays with my new Rad Sport piece. So we'll get all this stuff cut off and see where we're at. Probably. All right. That was a fun time getting all those spot welds drilled out. It uh, took a little bit of finesse with my air hammer, but we got it out. I just gotta clean up the frame, figure out exactly where I'm gonna cut this side, because that's, that's pretty bent. I don't know how well you can see that. And then this side, this side just needs to be cleaned up and get ready for, I'm gonna fix that. Get ready for the new piece. I'm gonna cut the new piece to uh, look just like that. There's the old piece here. Wasn't that bad. I've never drilled out spot welds before, so. Seems like I'm making good progress here. All right, here's my new piece. It's not quite ready yet. I gotta cut this frame rail out of it. I already cut this off of it, you know, I was practicing figuring out how to cut spot welds. But it's in much better shape. It's not bent, especially not in this area here, or in this area here, or in this area here. But there it is. I cut that front end off, but I gotta replace this frame rail here. This is pretty bent. I have a new frame rail piece to go on it. And then I got the new rad support here. This, this old rad support right here is all bent. And I cut all this out. I drilled the spot welds out of everywhere. This side was actually broken. but. This I drilled spot welds here and all down there and then all up in here and on both sides. And those were 
you know, in here and over in here. But this car is just a 305, so I'm not trying to make any show car out of it. I just really like driving it. It's a lot of fun to drive. Everybody waves at you. So then I also have this piece here, which goes down the side here. We got my new hood over there. It's a Z28 style hood. Because the one that was on it had the IROC Daytona hood and that got destroyed. But you know, this is the arm on the driver's side. And then I have new brakes and stuff. I think I may need tie rods, but I want to get the car back together first and see what else it needs. But that's what I'm working on today. I'll show you. This is one of the fenders that I got. And I got a front bumper cover. And it's a lip spoiler. And then I have this other fender. I already sanded the white fender and all that other stuff. I haven't sanded this while it's really blue in the picture. But this is like that teal color that all these cars come in. So I'm going to sand it and then there's a dent here. I'm going to see if I can make it better. It's not going to be perfect, but let's see if I can make that a little better. If not, I'm not really that worried about it because, like I said, this is a driver car. There's the old nose and the crash bar here. It's all bent. And then there's my old fender. fender is all crushed. So, I'll add some pictures and you'll be able to see what the car looked like before. And then also from the accident. Okay, so this is the sandpaper I'm going to use. I'm going to start with 80 grit and move to 120 and go to 320. And then I'm going to use this Rust-Oleum filler primer. It's a high build, so it'll fill any like minor imperfections. And then I'll let that set, and then I'll sand it. This is the bear walking through my neighbor's yard. Alright, right, so back to what I was saying. <clears throat> I'm going to use this filler primer and I'm going to paint that. I'll sand it by I'll sand it by hand using sanding blocks. I'll go over those when I get to that point. And then I'm going to do my final coat with this high performance Rust-Oleum paint. This is a this is flat black, so the car is going to be flat black. And we'll go from there. So, I guess to start. Oh, and then this is what I'm using here. Using this Bauer electric sander to start with. It's cuz it takes less time. Like I said, I'm going to start with the 80 grit. Um, if you're going to be sanding, use some kind of mask so you're not breathing in all that stuff. I got my bandana here. It's not the best, but I don't think I have any of the paper masks right now. And I'm outside, so. I also have my safety glasses so I don't get stuff in my eyes. But that's not funny.
So I have a, some damage here that I wanna see if I can repair. If you could see right here, this is bent. And it's not, it's not gonna come out perfect, but I wanna get it to at least line up better once I install it. So now's the time to do that repair. I'm gonna take my hammer and dolly and see if I can get this out. So there's a crease right here. I'm gonna see what I can do to get rid of that. I don't really, I'm not really sure. Maybe I need a different dolly. So that's way better than it was. There you can see it looks more uniform for the most part with that. I'm gonna see if I can get this out a little bit just so that the fender goes on the car okay. I mean, you're not really gonna see any of this, but I still wanna get it to look the best I can so it fits well. And then the other bent right here. You see that? There's this. This is the inside of that that dent there. So I'll see if I can knock that out a little. But that's that's right on the body line. So I don't know how well that's going to come out. Still like a gouge in the metal, but it's not as pronounced here. Let's see if I can get a little more. See, the thing I don't want to do is I don't want to mess the body line up because then I'll then I'll have bigger problems. But let's see how that. right here 
you can see it's still a gouge in the metal, but I got this way flatter. A little bit here, too. I don't think there's really anything I can do about that. So, this will get like a little, little tiny skim coat. I may actually work it too much. I don't know. I'm going to go over it and sand it and see how that comes out for it. slight low spot right here that I can barely feel but this I can't even really feel <clears throat> so we'll see if the filler primer even takes care of that but this side of the fender looks good now so I switch to a new 80 grit sandpaper I'm gonna go over it again but I'm not gonna go as aggressively because there's not as much paint the first one we was just getting through the clear coat and the base coat and everything and I'm not trying to get all the way down to bare metal just more of a smooth surface Switch to 120 grit, and I'm gonna go over it again. Should get rid of those 80 grit scratches and be smoother. This body molding here, I'm gonna go over by hand because it's, I don't know, it's not metal, so I don't wanna like grind into it. It's like plastic or something. Um, and then up on the inside here where like the hood would sit, I'll go over by over that by hand too, but that's just going to get scuffed because I don't really need to make that <clears throat> as smooth as this because that's under the hood. So if you notice, I did go down to metal in a couple spots on this side. There's some rust here, and I wanted to get down to the metal to see how deep it was. Uh, just any little spot of rust that I saw, I brought that down to metal. And after I do my 320 grit, I'm going to go and spray this rust treatment on all of those spots. Because that seals in the rust, and it allows it to just stop rusting there so I'm gonna do that <clears throat> so I'm gonna use this wax and tar remover to clean that surface so then I can use this rust treatment it says on here to allow 24 hours of drying time before top coating so we'll see but I'm gonna use this first and then I go to this primer, well, I'll go to this, and then this, maybe. We'll see, I don't know if I'm going to wait until tomorrow, I may just skip this then.
in to go get this crap. This stuff leaves like an oily film. I'm not sure if I like that. I'm not, I'm not sure about that stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go get some uh, surface prep, but this wax and tar remover does clean the surface, it says. So I'll do that. I'm gonna do this white, the driver's side fender now, which we've got some rust here. So I'm gonna sand that. I already sanded it a while ago, but I'm gonna re-sand it. And I think I'm gonna start at 120 and then do the 320, or maybe I'll just do the 320 first. Another thing to note is this says to use before you sand to prolong life of sandpaper, so I'm gonna see how that does too. We'll finish cleaning this. I already sprayed it on there, so we'll just wipe it down. So now I'm going to use some 220 grit sandpaper on a sanding block. They make these in all different sizes and shapes and they make them with like softer and harder materials but this is what I'm going to use to get in this groove here. I'll do that on this fender and the uh, 
other one so that I can just get that scuffed up for primer. Again, on that, I'm not looking for bare metal. I'm just looking to scuff the paint so that the next coat that I put on here will stick. So I went to the store and I got a couple things. I got this Duplicolor Automotive Prep Spray. I went to three different stores and all I could find was this one can. So I was like, I don't know how long it's gonna last. Let me see if there's something else I could buy. So I went to another store and I was looking for mineral spirits specifically because that's what the wax and tar remover said to use to remove it afterwards but as I was looking up some information online I found that mineral spirits may not be the best to use and acetone also may not be the best to use but I saw a couple of things recommending this it's called VMNP naphtha I don't know it says it cleans cleans greasy wax Cleans greasy, waxy, oily surfaces and machine parts. That's what it's called. So I bought that and I'm gonna see, see how it works. Because if that's the case, this is a lot cheaper for a quart, their, uh, yeah, one quart than this, because these are the same price. To start, we'll use prep spray first. We we'll use it on this side, and we'll see how that does. And then we'll use the VMNP stuff second, and we'll use it on the other side and see how that see how that looks. See, we're getting a lot of stuff off of there.
I'm not really sure the best way to apply this stuff. I think I, I think I like this. I think I like this better. It seems like it works pretty good. I can definitely see that the wax and grease remover, or the wax and tar remover, does help clean it because I didn't use it on the inside here. And when I wiped it with the VMNP stuff, it was still a little dirty. But I like that process. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other fender and the bumper. And then we'll paint, we'll primer it, fill a primer. So I'm going to do the rush treatment on a couple of the spots and then I will let it dry and do the filler primer.
And then while that's drying, I'm gonna spray this adhesion promoter onto the bumper. And I also have the lip spoiler over there, which I forgot to mention earlier. So I'm gonna spray the, this on there, because this is for uh, ideal for plastic, vinyl, and chrome. And this says to apply your top coat, which would be the primer, within 10 minutes of putting this on. So I also have this mask for spraying. It's an older one, but it's good, good enough for, for being outside. I have my paint can gun. You probably can't hear me, but I flips on there. Right, so now I'm going to do the filler primer on the bumper and the lip. Right, so I've sprayed the bumper and the spoiler. And I've gone ahead and wiped these down again, the fenders, and I'm going to go ahead and spray those now. I'm going to use the filler primer on the, on the fenders. Once all that dries, I'll get back out here and I'll block sand it and I'll get ready for the paint. But for now, it's uh, dinner time, so I'm going to clean up, let these here sit and dry till tomorrow or whenever, I guess, and we'll get some color on them. I'm Nick. Thanks for watching, get out and wrench. Please hit that like and subscribe button. And remember, get out and wrench.